This video contains information that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are a viewer and are triggered or shocked by images and need a warning prior to every clip or story being discussed, then please unsubscribe from my channel immediately. My channel covers the harsh reality of even the worst crimes imaginable and is for adults only. For those of you who fit into this category, take this message as your warning and don't watch any further. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> okay, wow, that's some crazy shit right there. Hmm. So you weren't getting any kind of echo sound at all? It sounded normal to you? I So I'm right now I'm using OBS Studio. I couldn't get my regular one working still. I couldn't get I can get the music playing, but I couldn't get my uh, my voice for some reason. So that's probably whatever those updates that I did were screwed things up. I always hate that, you know. Hey, hey, Microsoft! If you're gonna put an update out there, don't have it screw up everything on your computer, okay? It's ridiculous. Oh hell, you'll figure it out, you know. Okay. And thank you, uh, Sarita Hilly, for the donation I saw on the last live. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> I deleted the other one. I think it probably looks pretty stupid when I'm doing my robot with no music at all. Then it's like, oh my God, what's going on? Man, but that thing, it already had 500 and something views on that last one. I guess that's pretty good. I mean, you know. Oh, by the way, here's the the months mug. See that with the serial killers? I'm thinking of doing another version where it has three on the front and three on the back. Or six, I mean. Six and six. So that they're a little bit bigger. But it says months on both sides. But there it is. Months. Then it says, be safe out there on the back, on the other side. Oh man, I was hustling to get everything back open that I don't have all the folders open that I, that I had. So you'll have to wait a second here. I mean, you don't have to, but it's going to take me a second. Okay, now I got my bots working. Everything's up and running. <laughs> but man, I can't get the uh, Stream Labs to work for some reason. That's the one that has the, you know, the people dancing around on the screen and so forth. This one's quieter. Testing, 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 testing. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to do another 
round with Delaware, even though I haven't done all the other states. I just remember how many they have there. It's weird. I'm not sure what's going on in Delaware. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Paisley Dream. All right, so I guess everybody that was maybe here before is here now. I don't know. No idea, but we're going to get started. Uh, some of them are pretty crazy. I mean, they're all nuts, right? But Some of them, they just don't ever look into again forever after that. Well, I'm not too bad. I'm a little stressed out because uh, the first show, Tracy, uh, had no audio and I don't know what would have changed at all. So uh, it seems like it's something that happened in uh, the settings because my other programs all worked. Now I usually start whenever you're not here, Diane, on intentionally. Because it's usually a better flow to the show when you're not around. Uh, let's see. And that's just the kind of response you get when you make a comment like that. I don't even know what you're talking about. Good for you. Okay, here we go. I'm going to switch uh, screens. i got to get Google Earth open now. and Let me get to the correct area. See, all this stuff was done before, but now it's not. Okay, so the first case we're going to look at is Deborah Reese. She's 29 years old. This is 19... 89, January 28th, all right, and here we go. Let me get your, the chat open here. Well, cool, Miss Red Badger. All right, here we go. Body of unidentified woman found under I-95 overpass. The body of an unidentified woman was found Saturday beneath the Interstate 95 overpass at Madison Street in Wilmington, uh, State Police said. All right, so hold on a second. And this case is the Deborah Reese right here. And I go to Wilmington. And I think uh, I-95, I remember seeing it. There it is right there. I-95, so it's probably like right over here, maybe. Right in this area. If that's Wilmington, yeah, it looks like it would be like right there. Okay. Interstate 95 overpass at Madison Street. Well, maybe I, well, that's what I'll have to go to. That's not what I, I don't think I got the right location. So it was at Mad, I thought it was talking about the river a minute ago, so. At Madison Street, hold on. Madison Street, does it keep going around? Let's see.
Hmm. That's kind of weird. Because Madison doesn't really... Madison Street's right here. And then it goes this direction. Oh, there's 95 over here, so maybe it's right there, maybe? Madison. Ah, and then it would go like this. I think that still said Madison right there. Yeah, no, it's Adams. Jackson. So it's probably this area. I mean, if you continue that across, I don't know if it's still called Madison over here. But I don't see it going across on the other side anywhere. See, now it's called Adams. Is it right there? What's this little Jackson? Van Buren? Harrison? Frank? Uh. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on with why it stops right there, but it definitely doesn't cross over 95 again any at a later at a later point. So, I don't know, maybe I'll just move it up to, well, there's Madison Street right there, again. So it's Madison, Madison. All right, let's check it out one more time. And that's I-95. Ah, you're close to there. I wonder if it's right there, this thing. Because it leak goes on to 95 right there. And that's Madison. So, I don't know, maybe we'll just put something right there, see what happens. <laughs> maybe it'll get changed later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Interstate 95 overpass at Madison Street in Wilmington. Police spokesman Sergeant Gerald R. Pepper Jr. could not say if the woman was a victim of foul play. The body was found by a passerby at about 10 a.m. Saturday. was turned over to medical examiner's office to determine its identification and cause of death, police said. No further information was available Saturday as police continued their investigation. Okay, so that was just when the body was discovered. And that was the 29th of January. Then the 30th. Body identified as Manor Park Woman. A body found beneath an Interstate 95 overpass in Wilmington was identified Sunday as that of a Manor Park Woman, Deborah L. Reese, 29, of 9 Lee Road. Or Leah. I mean, that's probably, well, I don't know if it's Leah, L-E-A, but let's put that in there. Yeah, so that's her house right there. Ah, man. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> it's somebody's birthday or what's going on? Okay. 
Police said they could release no details on the condition, uh, condition or discovery of the body found by an unidentified passerby at about 10 a.m. Saturday beneath the overpass. State Police Spokesman Sergeant Gerald R. Pepper Jr. and uh, said Sunday night that autopsy results have not been released by the medical examiner. Police are on Sunday continued their investigation into whether Reese was the victim of foul play, Pepper said. The address police gave as Reese, Reese's is in the modest development off US 13 near Hare's Corner. A man at the single-story White House Sunday identified by a neighbor as Reese's brother, James Spear Jr., was visibly upset and would not comment. A young, blonde-haired boy identified as the victim's son, Carl, walked in the yard. Reese's mother, reached by telephone, also declined to comment Sunday, but a neighbor from across the street, Anthony J. Sosofo of 8 Lee Road, said he had watched Debbie grow up since she was a little girl. Reese's parents, who own and live in the home, were taking care of her son. The Spears family is well-liked in their neighborhood, according to Sosofo. I'm very sorry to hear about Debbie, he added. She lived there for about 20 years before she went off and got married and had Carl. Her life was mixed up. She had some tough times, he said. Sosofo said Reese quit high school early but continued to live with her parents until about five or six years ago. Although Sosofo said he had not seen much of her recently, he remembered seeing her in the neighborhood a couple of weeks ago, but he didn't speak with her at the time. Thank you, Rochelle Black. All right. And then the next day, murder suspected in the death. A Newcastle County woman whose body was found beneath an Interstate 95 overpass was a victim of foul play, a state Spokesman said Monday the body was identified Sunday as that of Deborah L. Reese, 29, of the unit block of Lee Road. I mean, let's go down to the actual street view so you can see it. Just a modest little home right there. Investigators originally called the death suspicious, but they pretty much calling it a homicide now, said Sergeant David Citro, a state police spokesman. Citro said the body had visible injuries that were not consistent with suicide or an accident, but he declined to describe those injuries. He said he did not know how long the body had been beneath the overpass before it was discovered about 10 a.m. Saturday. Uh, Monday night, investigators had not received an autopsy report yet. And uh, let's see, in August 1984, Reese was arrested while driving a stolen pickup truck south in the northbound lanes of Basin Road. Police said at the time she struggled briefly with state and county police officers. She was charged with second-degree reckless endangering, two counts of second-degree forgery, theft, driving under the influence, and and um, unauthorized use of a vehicle according to superior court records. She was convicted on all charges and given a two-year prison sentence with all but about four months suspended. So she obviously had some bad times. And then they're kind of discussing another case along with this one. They say they're not, re not related. Let's see. There's somebody else named Gail Smith. Yeah, so they, they thought maybe there was one that was related, but uh, they're not. So I'm going to go all the way to 1999. I mean, this is how... This this one didn't have a, very much coverage in it, but at least it's something, right? Like, this case, this case has probably never been discussed ever anywhere, right? Police said Reese was a prostitute who worked motels along US-13. I guess this is what they found out later. 
She was found by a passerby on January 29th under the Interstate 95 viaduct where it crosses Madison Street. She died of blunt force trauma to the head. Police said Reese was acutely intoxicated and, and had drugs in her system. Police believe a client may have dumped Reese and assaulted her to cover up a drug overdose. I mean, isn't that just sad? I mean, it's just, that's it, right? And there'll probably never be an arrest made in that. But, but the thing is, if she was sexually assaulted, you might have her DNA, but at the same time, she was a prostitute, right? So, um, you know. I guess you could say, I mean, anybody could just claim, oh, yeah, no, I was with her earlier. I paid her some money, but, uh, you know, that was, I, you know, I left her, fi you know, she was fine when I left, right? So that's the sad part about it. It's just, that's it. There's no more to the story. So even if they identify the DNA that was in her last, it doesn't necessarily mean that that person did something to her. In this case, normally it does, right? Because somebody's got a, you know, they're married and then they get raped or something. And then, um, you know, uh, prostitutes, you can't really re rely on the, the semen sample. Okay, so that is story number one. That's where she lived. Never made it back. Okay, the next one is uh, Eleanor Robinson, uh, December 11th, 1975. The state medical examiner's office ruled yesterday that, a, that an unidentified woman whose body was found near here Thursday was slain. The body now ident identified as that of a black female in her 30s Five foot three to five five, 120 to 130 pounds, was found by a man walking his dog in Seashore State Park. The man noticed a cardboard box in the bushes, and further inspection revealed the body found and badly decomposed. Oh, no, excuse me. That, that the body, um, further inspection revealed the body was bound not found, and badly decomposed. State police said the woman had the left upper front tooth partly broken off, several teeth had been extracted, and there were numerous fillings and gold caps. On her right hand was a silver cocktail ring with one diamond and a gold ID bracelet with the name Eleanor inscribed. Around her neck was a gold sacred heart necklace suspended by a gold chain. The exact cause of death is not known yet, according to the medical examiner's office, but the woman had been dead anywhere from six months to a year. Police believe the woman was killed elsewhere and brought to Dewey, the Dewey Beach area. Now let me, let me just get to Dewey Beach here. So this is Eleanor. Okay, so this is Dewey Beach. That was December 17th, 1975, and then mm, probably about two months later, M-U-N-T-S. <laughs> I almost feel like, I don't think I'm going to go the rest of my life where I can say months, months, you know, without saying, oh, God.
Yeah, let's. Just, what, I don't even know what you're referring to, Sam. You're 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 not related to anything that we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, just listen. If you're from the area, don't be like, oh yeah, everybody, look at look 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 look. Okay, it takes away from the actual story. Nobody, it doesn't add to it at all. Okay. All right. Now, if there's something interesting that I that I'd like to know about a specific area, then it might be helpful, but. Just telling everybody about every single place and everything like that, it just distracts from the actual story. You see, it's yeah, that's right. Look at, 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 look at. Okay. All right. The dad badly decomposed body found near here, December 11th, was identified yesterday as that of Philadelphia woman, missing for six months. State police said Eleanor Robinson Taylor, 41 had been missing from her home where she lived alone since June 11. Her body was found trussed up in a cardboard box in the bushes in Seashore State Park. Okay, now we can get a little bit more. Oh yeah, I've been there 50 times! Oh my god, I've been there 50 times! Hey, thanks Stacy Galloway. Wow, that would have been the uh, the cat eye. You know, I kind of figured this was too many people. Right there. Yeah, so right down in this area, probably. What she said was, you're so kind and generous, Gray. Thank you for covering cold cases as well as new cases. You do so much for victims and their families. Thank you for everything. I love you and the Freak family so much. Well, we all love you too, Stacy Galloway. <laughs> and thanks, Sean Beecham. Yeah, you know, there's nothing to apologize for, Sam. I'm just flipping you crap. I love it, man. Every time you get somebody from an area, boy, they just start typing in a thousand miles an hour, you know, instead of just letting it play out. And if, if there's something we get stuck on, let me know. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of these murders that are unsolved are, you know, a lot of times they're drug-related, something like that. Yeah, thank you, uh, Stacy. That was very kind. And then Sean Beecham said, Poor Gray, I have dragged you up and down the stairs. Thank you for saving my sanity. Mary Jane, please. You mean Mary Lou? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm just doing the ones I got, Gene. So, we'll have to... It's just what it is. Yeah, but I think she meant Mary Lou. She likes the Mary Lou voice. Hey, Sean Beecham, how's it going? Man. That's it. That, that voice right there will just wake you right up. Oh, wow, I, I didn't even realize that was $100. Holy crap, Stacy! I thought that was like the cat eye one. My my brain didn't even see that. <laughs> I've never see, I've only seen that like two or three times ever up on the top. So thank you, wow. And you guys all know, I mean, you guys probably always think it's some kind of deal we have, but it's not, right? I mean, I every chance I think about it and remember is that, you know, if you go into the description of the video, there's a link to Stacy Galloway's book, uh, Death of Nine, The Diet Love Pass Mystery. And it's so it's such a great book because it's all, well, not all, but I mean, it's got a lot of images in it. So while you're going through it, it's just, uh, is, it's an audible? I didn't know it was an audible. Do, do you read it, Stacy? You should uh, you should do that. If you didn't, read your own book out loud. Yeah, 
Yeah, that is kind of weird, right, Rebel? When you were younger, we all were just doing stupid shit. And there was these killers out there. Yeah, that might be, I think that might be pretty cool if you just read it. And then maybe even have a little asides every once in a while with some extra thoughts that you might have. Or, I don't know. Okay. So there, there's where she was found. The state med medical examiner's office has determined that strangulation was the cause of death. State police believe the woman was killed elsewhere and the body brought to where it was found for disposal. You know, it's weird is that sort of like the Long Island serial killer location, you know what I mean? You sort of wonder, I mean, are some, if some of those are connected. You, know, you drive out on these sort of these peninsulas, on these roads that nobody's really on at night, and then you dump bodies on them. Right? Because how many people are really driving out here at night? So it's right in this area. I wonder what it looks like. I bet it's over here too, like you would pull off. Yeah. That looks like a, a body dumping area. They sure have a lot of blurred out areas when <laughs> right there, almost as if they half expect it, right? Yeah, this one's from 1975. Yeah, seriously, if you haven't got the book, you got to check it out. And then at the same time, as a supplement, you could watch our three-part series that we did on it. And she came on and we did these shows where we sort of broke it up into sort of three different segments and discussed it all. Uh, even found using the photographs and, you know, the precise areas on Google Earth where ever, all the stuff was. And, man, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the thing is, the link is in the description, and it's always in there so you guys can if you find it in there it's not too far down either so her body was found trussed up in a cardboard box in the now this is i think we were on the wrong is that the right one yeah since june 11th her body was found trussed up in a cardboard box in the bushes and the seashore State Park, right? That's where we're at, right? It's Seashore State Park, yeah. By a man walking his dog. Identification. How many times have we heard that one? Identification was made from dental records supplied by a New York dentist who had treated the woman during the early 1960s. The state medical examiner's office was determined that strangulation, no, excuse me, has determined that strangulation was the cause of death. State police believe the woman was killed elsewhere and the body brought to where it was found for disposal. The investigation into the homicide will remain with Delaware State Police until there is proof the killing took place outside of the state. Okay, and that was January 27th, 1976. Then June. The only, the next, the only other mention is a 1978, June 25th. 
just and this is an article just a part of an article that mentioned a whole bunch of different unsolved cases that's why there's a bullet point there the decomposed body of Eleanor Robinson Taylor 41 of Philadelphia was found strangled bound and stuffed in a box December 11th 1975 in Seashore State Park near Dewey Beach state police trace uh, police traced the box which is that's kind of interesting right to its manufacturer and ultimately to a five and ten cent store in Delaware County Pennsylvania there the trail ended yeah so she probably got killed up in uh, can you guys still hear me not sure what that sound is let me know if you can still hear me I'm not sure why it did that uh, okay huh could you guys hear that little beeping sound or like it connected to a USB port not sure why that would be going and whatever this update is doesn't seem to be the greatest what do you mean earlier too I mean on this live right here Okay, so that was, uh, that's it. That's it for that case right there. Just another, but this one, it just seems, uh, well, I wonder if there was more if I'd gone up to the Philadelphia. Maybe I'll check back in on that a little bit later. To go, go up to um, Pennsylvania, right? Didn't they say at the end that that's where, hold on, let me. Because it could have been that they kind of covered the story for a while. Yeah, Delaware County. Huh. So there's a Delaware County, Pennsylvania. Although this is in, you know, Wilmington, Delaware itself. So maybe there's a Delaware County or like right near the Delaware, I guess. All right. Now we're moving on to Let me let me just check that out right now. Since I'm on it. Where's Kit Kat? She likes when I get out uh, newspapers.com. Okay, there's that one. January 27th. Okay, so they, they are covering it over there. Let me go to 1975 again. Nothing. They're all the same. No, nothing. See, it's sad, right? They just, that's it. Okay, now we're moving on to another case. So there you go. I mean, basically, there's no information on that one. And there's no, they didn't even have a picture of her. Okay, and this one is Elva J. 
poor. All right, and this is the first reference here. A service for Elva J. Poor 17 of 136 Forest Lane. So I guess we can get that. I already, I already have that. So this is where she lives. And there's no street view there, but it, I guess there's probably a house or lived. And this is uh, June 17th. 1992. Elva's body was discovered Wednesday on US 13 near Odessa, Delaware. State police said the cause of death will be determined by the Delaware Medical Examiner. She was a 10th grade student at Bohemia Manor High School, Chesapeake City, where she played on the field hockey team. She is survived by her parents, G. Wayne and Janice E. Poor. That's how I, I actually could find, I found their um, address, because they still live there. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, the dad does. I think the wife died a long time, a while back, 1990-something. Thanks, Jessica Schubach. Appreciate it. <laughs> yep, second part of the month. <laughs> Time to donate for the second. Wait, hold on. Time to donate for the second part of the month. Wait, why are you doing that? Well, because there's no Streamlabs voice. Oh, okay, cool. That makes sense. Oh boy, here we go, everybody. Here we go. All right, uh, she is survived by her parents, G. Wayne and Janice E. Poor, with whom she lived, a brother, Robert W., at home, her paternal grandparents, Walter and Lavinia Poor of Hacks Point, and her maternal grandmother, Elizabeth N. Martin Elton. Okay. So then we have another article on the same day, body found on U.S. 13 identified... So obviously it was identified because the previous article had that and it was put out on the same day. The state medical examiner Thursday identified a young Cecil County, Maryland woman whose body was found the morning before along US 13 near Odessa. She was identified as Elva J. Poor, 17 of Chesapeake City. State police are classifying the death as suspicious. The cause of death is being investigated Authorities said Thursday, two unidentified men in a truck on their way to Newcastle noticed the body on the right side of the highway near a guardrail a half mile north of Odessa. So this is on US 13. Yeah, this is where I have it. Now this, this is Odessa right here. And let me just see, like if you were here, half mile. Yeah, so it could be a little bit further up. Yeah, it's 13. I'm going to move it up to uh, this spot that looks more likely right there. We don't have any crime scene photos or anything, so... Yeah, and see there's guardrails right there. Yeah, I guess they're all along here, but... Somewhere in this area. Two unidentified men found her. Uh, they stopped an off-duty police officer, I wonder how they knew that, who reported the discovery at 8 a.m. She was wearing a t-shirt shorts and shoes but carried no identification after making funeral arrangements Thursday family members were too distraught to talk said family friend William Sice of Elkton friends have been stopping by he said to offer support to the family parents G. Wayne and Janice E. and their son Robert W. and the girls paternal grandparents Walter and Lavinia Poor 
of Hacks Point and her maternal grandmother Elizabeth. Everybody is kind of a daze. In kind of a daze. Yeah, I mean, that's how it gets. Bohr was a 10th grader at Bohemia Manor High School in Chesapeake City. Okay. And then we're going to move forward to another article. This is pretty similar. She was identified as Elva J. Poor. State police are classifying the death as suspicious. Wait a second. Love, love you. <laughs> Wait, that's not, you're not supposed to do it. What are you doing? Yeah. Love you, Gray. Thanks for all that you do. Heart. Smiley face with heart. Heart. Smiley face with heart. Are you sure those are them? Jeez, <laughs> 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 uh, I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> yeah, was that what it was? Growing heart? Growing heart? <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Okay, smiling face with blowing kiss, right? <laughs> Hey, I give it a shot. Okay, I don't rem I don't know what they look like. I just hear them said sometimes. The state medical examiner Thursday identified a young Cecil County, Maryland woman whose body was found in the. I guess she's from Maryland. In the morning before along U.S. 13 near Odessa, she was identified as Elva J. Poor, 17, of Chesapeake City. State police are classifying the death as suspicious. And this is also on the, the same date, uh, June 19th. So there's not a lot of new stuff in that one. But then we move, move forward almost eight, ten months later. Okay, a $25,000 reward is being offered for information leading to an indictment in the slaying of a Chesapeake City, Maryland teenager, Delaware Crime Stoppers Incorporated, said the family of the victim, 17-year-old Elva Jean Poor, has guaranteed the reward. Elva's body was found the morning of June 17th along US-13, just north of Odessa. She was last seen the evening before the ocean, before in the Ocean City Maryland area. State police believe she was killed elsewhere and her body was left along the highway where a passing motorist found it about 8 a.m. Elva was 5 feet 4 and a half inches tall and weighed 105 pounds and had light brown hair. Okay, then about another year and a half later, 1994, September 24th, so this one has a lot more information. So I'm going to go over this one because it looks like now they put out a hell of a lot more than they had before. Uh, you know, what, let me go. I have to go look this up because this looks like this is the second page. So hold on a second. I didn't realize that. September 24th. Page one. Okay, yeah, definitely need, definitely need the
Now there's tons of them. You know, Delaware seems to have a, a particularly a lot of them. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, you know either they're just better at documenting them. I don't know if they're they're just not doing what they should be doing up there. I don't know. It's weird. Okay, let me name this one B first. Then, ah, crap. All right, there we go. Got them in there, and here's the first part. A mother's fear comes true. Yep. The worst day of Janice Poor's life began with little more than a vague worry, a nagging feeling that her youngest child might be in trouble. As she drove to work that June morning in 1992, heading north over the arch of the Chesapeake City Bridge to her job, as a teller at County Bank in Elkton, her thoughts were on 17-year-old Elva. After a period of rebellion, Elva seemed to be settling down and maturing. Janice and her husband, Wayne, were relieved to see their daughter returning to the cheerful and affectionate girl she had once been, whose life centered on her beloved horse and her many friends. But Janice Poor was worried because Elva had gone to Ocean City three days earlier. So, let's see, I think I have, yeah, I have Ocean City's way down here. And apparently she was sort of seen near this lodge right there, but this might have a hell of a lot more information. Yeah, she'd gone to Ocean City three days earlier, leaving only a note on the kitchen table. She was getting a ride with a girlfriend. She assured her parents. Uh, she assured her parents of that. She had a place to stay. They shouldn't worry. She'd call home in a few days. Although Elva wasn't due to graduate from Bohemia Manor High School for another two years, many of her friends were spending unofficial senior weeks in Ocean City, and her parents knew she had been eager to join them. It was the time of year when thousands of teenagers called June bugs by the natives swarmed to the sometimes rowdy resort town to party. By Wednesday, June 17th, the poors hadn't heard from her, their daughter and they were getting scared. Janice tried to put her worries out of her mind and concentrate on her job. Maybe when she got home from work, Janice thought, Elva would call. Then two Delaware State Police detectives walked up to her. Yeah, that's a nightmare. Hey, 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 Shell Renee. Let me let me just do the show, okay? I'm, 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 it's cool that you live there and everything. But I'm just going to do it, all right? It doesn't add any nuance or any help or anything like that. I'm just trying to get through the story, all right? Thanks. All right, uh, let's see. So now, I have, now I have to go back to the next part. Then two Delaware State Police detectives walked up to her in the bank that Wednesday afternoon and a wave of fear washed over her. She knew something terrible had happened to Elva. She stared at the detectives, trying to read the expressions on their faces, no clue, so she spoke three words. Is she dead?
Yeah, cool. Good. I mean, but that's all in the story. I mean, I mean, if you live there, you're gonna know. I'm just reading what Shell. Uh, I can't remember her name now. Yeah, uh, Shell Renee was talking about. Okay, good. But the thing is, is yeah, it's all in the story here. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mean you're right. Like, oh my God, I'm right. I'm right. Yeah, because it's the same story. You know, it's this is it. It's just a crazy story. I mean, there's always these places like this, no matter what state you're in, where um, all the high schoolers go party somewhere and uh, just shit happens. I mean, who the hell knows what happened to her? There could have been... I mean, it, we got to go through the rest of this article, but, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. So when she was at her work, a wave of fear washed over her. She knew something terrible had happened to Elva. She stared at the detectives, trying to read the expressions on their faces. No clue. So she spoke three words. Is she dead? The news wasn't good. A girl's body had been found along US-13 near Odessa, Delaware, and someone would have to identify her. Janice eventually reached her husband, who works on a horse breeding farm, and their son, Bobby Elva's brother, then 23, they were taken on, uh, they were taken to the medical examiner's office in Wilmington. Wilmington. There they, they were led to a sterile looking room where the body of a petite young woman lay on a steel gurney. Her collar length, light brown hair was wet and combed straight back from her ashen face her body was draped in a white sheet drawn up tight under the under her chin well you don't have to don't worry about it shell renee i'm just saying it doesn't you know that is kind of weird that but you don't don't create extra drama though because now you're making it seem like we're we're all the ones i'm just trying to tell you when i'm doing a show and you got people that live somewhere and they just keep typing in over and over and over. Oh God, look, 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 look. It just, it, uh, I don't know how to explain it. You know, it's interesting though. I mean, it's cool that you, you guys are, you, you might have known her at some point. A grumpy cat pic picture, huh? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is I, I probably shouldn't ever really look at the chat, but I do just to be polite. You know, but because uh, <laughs> when I try to do these shows, I mean, I, I like seeing what you guys are saying, too. But at the same time, it's uh, if I keep going, I think I get on a better flow. And a lot of times I get taken off of what I'm doing and then it, I, then I forget what I already said and the whole flow of it goes away. And Yeah. Yeah, well, it doesn't change anything. They still knew her. They're, it's just kind of weird to them because I'm covering a case that they're aware of when they were younger. Right? I mean, I've been getting that lately. Like, wow, that's so weird that you covered that case in this uh, in this small town. And I'm like, well, yeah, we do that all the time over here. Well, it does, because what happens is I look into the chat, Michelle, and then I realize, wow, <laughs> you know, if I look in there and people are going, oh, my God, I bought this new dog. It looked like this. And there's 15 people re responding to that. Then I start wondering, is this just absolutely the most boring topic that they've ever heard? Although, you know, people do talk about other stuff. It's it's not like you were robots, right? Yeah.
I don't know. Why do you why are you not on uh, the channel anymore? That's a good answer to your question. Yeah, I think that is pretty weird. You know. I mean, she's sitting around going, God, isn't this the one? Oh, and then the husband goes, oh my God, that's the one. It, but it's just one of those things where, yeah, yep, it's the same case, yep. <laughs> Sometimes I am, but then I'm not a good multitasker when it's totally off topic. All right, so I'm gonna, let me get back to the this start of this page. She stared at the detectives, trying to read the expressions on their faces, no clue. So she spoke three words. Is she dead? The news wasn't good. A girl's body had been found along US-13 near Odessa, Delaware, and some someone would have to identify her. Janice eventually reached her husband, who works on a horse breeding farm, and their son, Bobby Elba's brother, then 23, they were taken to the medical examiner's office in Wilmington. There, they were led to a sterile-looking room where the body of a petite young woman lay on a steel gurney. Her collar-length, light brown hair was wet and combed straight back from her ashen face. Her body was draped in a white sheet drawn up tight under her chin. Although the pores had been told, the young woman's face was unmarked. It was bruised and blackened. Through their shock, anger, and grief, the pores told the detectives where, what everyone in the room had suspected. It was Elva. The investigation into the death of Elva Jean Poor began even before her family was brought to the morgue. State police started to work almost as soon as two truck drivers spotted her body at 8 a.m. June 17, 1992. About the same time Janice Poor was on her way to work, they flagged down a passing police officer about, about to start his own work day at Troop 9 in Odessa. Elva's body was lying just beyond the guardrail off of northbound lane of US-13 between Odessa and the Drawer Creek Bridge. What was that? Um, shit. Oh, dry, uh, draw your. Okay. Oh, I think I was, I think I got it right on exactly where it is. So that bridge is going to be right here. That's this. Between Odessa and, yeah, so there's Odessa. There's the bridge. So it's somewhere just like right in this area right here. Because there's the creek and then there's the bridge that goes over it right there. Oh, you just had a baby? Emily? Flotilla? <laughs> oh. Well, thanks, Shell. When I'm done with this part, though, maybe I can ask you a couple questions. Or, you know, if I can think of anything. Did you... Well, how about this? Did your... Let me just think for a second. 
I was thinking maybe your husband. Like, did you guys party in that same spot? Were there a lot of people there or what? Because I'm trying to figure out how did she get separated. If she went there with all these people to party, I wonder if somebody... I'm kind of I'm picturing a trucker, but, you know, anybody could have done something to her. Because look at she's way down here, right, in Ocean City. And it's a little bit interesting that that's where that other body and the other case was right here. Look. The Eleanor Robinson. Her body is dumped right there. And then right down the road, she uh, disappears and then is dumped up here. Right? I mean, it's kind of... A little bit strange that you have two unsolved cases right on that same stretch right there. Don't you think? Well, I mean, if you just think that... Uh, so the body was dumped here. So... You know, they're all already there, right? So maybe you pick up another person. I mean, I, you know, the years are quite a bit off, but, you know. It's just, it's just interesting to see right on the same stretch here within... How many miles is that? Yeah, it's 18 miles, but still just on that same road, basically. Yeah. Well, this is where the other body was dumped right there. Okay, about the same time Janice Poor was on her way to work, they flagged down a passing police officer about to start his own work day at Troop 9 in Odessa. Elva's body was lying just beyond the guardrail off the northbound lanes of US-13 between Odessa and the dry, uh, I don't know if it's Droyer Creek uh, Bridge. Detectives soon learned that Elva had gone to Ocean City not with a girlfriend, but with four young men, oh boy, from Chesapeake City. Her parents believe she never planned to stay with the four who were older than El Elva, but just wanted a ride to meet up with other friends at the beach. I guess it makes some sense. The five young people apparently stopped to do some fishing then arrived in Ocean City Monday morning, June 15th. Oh man, my stomach's just going nuts. They arrived in Ocean City Monday morning, June 15th, said Detective Sergeant Michael Fontello. Is that right? Fontello? Flotilla? <laughs> Who, uh, who has been working on the case since April 1994. Two other detectives preceded him. By late Monday night, two of the men had apparently left for Chesapeake City and Elva had argued with another person at the Admiral Motel at 9th Street and Baltimore Avenue. Baltimore. Admiral Motel. 
at 9th Street and Baltimore Avenue. Okay, motel is what I meant. Yeah, so that's it. That's first. That's 9th Street. Okay. At the Admiral Motel on 9th Street and Baltimore Avenue. See, I don't think that that's accurate. Let's see. 9th and Baltimore. Yeah, I think they probably meant like first. I don't think that's accurate right there. That article. Admiral Motel. Okay, this is closer than right there. Okay, there we go. So ninth and so that's definitely on ninth street. And is this Baltimore right here? Yeah, okay, there we go, right there. It's weird, a minute ago and I typed that in, it gave me a whole different spot up north. Did you guys see that? Okay, I got disconnected for a second. Are we connected again? Can you hear me? Okay. All right, so that's where they had, there was an argument there. Let me move this back into this is in here. All right, so right here it says, by late Monday night, two of the men had apparently left for Chesapeake City and Elva had argued with another person, but it's not saying one of the other two men at the Admiral Motel at 9th Street and Baltimore Avenue. She left the motel and was seen walking along the boardwalk at about 2 a.m. Tuesday, June 16th. She had no money and nowhere to stay, but several friends from Chesapeake City had rooms in the area. Someone suggested she stay with a friend at the nearby Ocean Lodge Motel at 8th Street and Philadelphia Avenue. So I think I've already got that one. Yeah, that's Philadelphia and that's 8th. So that's the one that's the one right there. There was a party at the Ocean Lodge and Elva loved parties, but she never arrived. Wow. Sometime in the next 30 hours, Elva was hit on the head and strangled and her body dumped along US 13. An autopsy found faint marks on her wrists and ankles as if she had been held down for a time. There is no proof that she was raped, police say, although they found semen on her clothing. Well, there you go. Well, hopefully they still have that. But police have been unable to find anyone who will admit to seeing Elva in the 30 hours between when she was spotted on the boardwalk and when her body was found. Well, I think she was just taken and, uh, you know, you might want to check to see who she was arguing with. You know, maybe it was some guy that 
you know, wanted her to go do something, and she goes, no, I'm not going to do it. And then they got pissed off, and then he gave her, just took her as she started to walk and uh, killed her. We have no idea where she was or who she met or where she was killed. Uh, with another friend, let's see. Yeah, we have no idea where she was or who she met or where she was killed. That's what puzzles us. Fant Fantello and the previous investigators have explored several theories that some or all of the four men who accompanied Elva to Ocean City know something about her death. That she met up with a, another friend or a stranger on the boardwalk and went with him. That she started hitchhiking home and was picked up by the person who killed her. Those are just different theories. So far, after more than two years, none of the theories have been proved or disproved. Many of Elva's numerous friends and acquaintances who were in Ocean City that week have been questioned, but others have refused to talk. Some have taken lie detector tests or volunteered blood samples, while others have been less cooperative. Cooperative. A family, well, they just need to go do genealogy right now. Hopefully they have this stuff. No, Gene, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It just means that, go <laughs> oh, good. You don't know why that was on her. She could have done it for any number of reasons. I mean, he could have put it on her like that for any number of reasons. Man, you just come up with some of these things like... Gene, Gene, Gene. <laughs> hey, no, it's no big deal, Gene. You're always, it's always funny. I always, I look forward to reading your comments so I can go, oh boy. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I think at two in the morning you would probably end up wanting to stay overnight, not hitchhiking. Um, so far, after more than two years, none of the theories has proven to, or disproven. Uh, many of Elva's numerous friends and acquaintances who were in Ocean City that week have been questioned, but others have refused to talk. Some have taken lie detector tests or volunteered blood samples, while others have been less cooperative. A family friend has offered a $25,000 reward. Detectives have publicized the case on television, WBOC out of Salisbury, and First state news in Delaware, but Janice and Wayne Poor, their grief compounded by frustration, wonder if the detective could have investigated more aggressively. They question why every possible suspect wasn't forced to talk and give blood and hair samples immediately. Last December, one of four men who accompanied Elva to Ocean City, there, hold on one sec, I gotta mark this one. I gotta call that same guy. Man, how could they... <laughs> Come on, Delaware. You need to start doing stuff. Last December, one of the four men who accompanied Elva to Ocean City, Michael Bailey, was killed in a car crash. Now the poors wonder what he might have known that will never come to light. There's a cloud of suspicion over them, Wayne Poor said, of the remaining three men. If I were them, I'd want to clear it up. Okay. 
Pantello agrees, but notes that police are limited in what they can force people to do. He and the previous detectives have worked long hours on the case, he said, and have also been frustrated by the lack of progress. Even the extraordinarily large reward offered didn't generate any leads, he said, but after his most recent appearance on television news, he received a tip that might take the case in a different direction, toward a stranger instead of a friend of Elvis. These people... Her friends were the obvious ones, but maybe they weren't involved, he said. Maybe we were looking in the wrong place all along. And this is from, when is this from? Yeah, it's just later in the year, or actually two years later, this article. After two years, and with, uh, the next paragraph would have answered that. After two years, and with an ever-growing caseload of new homicides, Fontello acknowledges that the trail often seems cold, but he, he's adamant that it remains an active case with leads he is still pursuing. I have sleepless nights, too, but the main reason I would be extremely happy to solve this case is for them. Fontello said of... Elva's parents. They live for this. They can't get on with their lives. Janice and Wayne Poor admit that they can't stop thinking or talking about what happened to their daughter. They both work all day, come home, and tend to Elva's horse made of metal um, hopping, hoping, or made of metal, what does it say? Made of metal, hoping to tire themselves out enough to sleep that night. The mare is kept at a farm near their home, south of Chesapeake City, and they're with her, or when they're with her, they feel a connection with their daughter. They attend a support group that gives them a chance to talk about their grief, but they still have trouble sleeping, and they still have nightmares in which they see a faceless, nameless person beating Elva with his fists. It seems like night after night we go over it and rehash it, Janice Poor, 45, said. We're just so angry. Wayne Poor, 48, tries to comfort himself as best he can. We're lucky her body was found, he said. She's not going to rest in peace, in my mind, until the murder is found. But at least I can visit her grave and talk to her. He believes his own mind will be nine, uh, he believes his own mind will be 95% at peace once his daughter's killer is behind bars but his wife isn't so sure. I want them caught. They should pay with their life, Janice Poor said firmly. But I don't know if it will really help me feel better. Exactly, because there is no closure. Elva will never get married will never have her grandchildren. She's gone forever. Yeah, what a nightmare. I think the mother, I think, has passed away. I think she died in uh, the 90s, late 90s. Like, not, maybe just out of this whole grief of all this. Man, that horrible. But man, I mean, see, these are the, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, wouldn't you guys love to do a that same sort of type of fundraiser we did before on something like this? You know, how come this case isn't the first one that they grab? I hope they save this stuff. If they didn't save it, man. I mean, this is late enough to know, too. 92? Okay, this is definitely one where they got they can take the DNA... Use Identifinders or Parabon Nano Labs or um, you know the myriad of other companies that do it now, and just get the name. I mean, it really 
is solvable. Especially, listen, a lot of people do genealogy in that area, out in those areas too. Okay, so it's way more likely. Really? How, how would he know who did it? What do you mean if Bailey did it? What are, you, what are you talking about? You mean the guy, is Bailey the one that got killed or what? Yeah, it's just like the Delphi case. Oh, I think I know who did it. I, I, you know. What I think is the DNA will say who did it. And they need to go do that right now. Yeah, this is cold. This is 1994, uh, this article, and there's really... Well, I think there was some more, so hold on. Okay, and then 1999, she showed up in this other article. This is actually how I found her. This case was from this other article, and it just says, Poor was last seen alive June 16th in Ocean City. But this is 1999, okay, in an article that listed literally 100 people. Here, so you look at look at this article here. Look at these are all names, and that's page one, okay. And then there's page two. Every one of these was in a 1999 article of cold cases. And that's a lot, okay. So hell, there might be a part three at one point. Yeah, they said he died right after it happened. There was four people. Right, but you're. I, listen, I guarantee. I am. Almost, I I will bet money that he doesn't know who the killer is. Okay. I'll bet money on that. Let's just wait. How about this? Send me an email with the name, and I'll store it. And if this case is ever solved with DNA, and you're right, I'll I'll send you a hoodie. <laughs> I just I just don't believe it. Everybody always says that, you know. If I had a dollar for everybody in the Delphi case that said they know who the killer is, I would have retired a long time ago. Yeah, so these this is her right there. Um... Uh, this is from 2009. Elva Poor left her home near Chesapeake City. I mean, I think that last article pretty much said it all. Um, they hope to make a new breakthrough in the case by filing DNA samples recovered from Elva's body and clothing into a nationwide database that will compare them to thousands. So that's CODIS. So they do have her DNA profile, uh, the, the killer. It's DNA profile, right? New. Yeah. No, that's cool, Shell. I'm just saying, I guarantee it. He, I mean, I think the odds of him knowing who the killer is are very, very low, is what I'm trying to tell you. I mean, if like I said, if I had a dollar for everybody that's so confident in different cases, uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Heather, but what am I about to tell you about?
Yes, and Gray is about to tell you about it as well. I'm from the area? What, I was going to tell people that you're from the area? I, I don't get what you're saying. But yes, in uh, 2009, they, they did have a DNA sample. Yeah, look at that. So her mother died in uh, in 1999. That's what I was thinking. And how sad is that? She probably got just so devastated that her body became weak and her immune system was down. Yeah, I I already told you about it though, Heather, way before you said that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I mentioned it like five, four or five minutes ago. But yeah, 2009 is they had DNA there. Uh, Elvis' parents had forbidden her from going to Ocean City for senior week in 1992. She had been spending time with older boys and young men, some in their early 20s who were recreational drug users, they said. Elva was dropped out of Bohemia Major High School on June 14th. She left a note on the kitchen table and the family... Town Point wrote home claiming she was riding to Ocean City with a girlfriend and that wasn't true. Instead she left with a couple of boys, was four I guess. Uh, Elva was last seen alive arguing on the boardwalk with one of the boys. So that is one of the boys. About 3 a.m. So now they're saying 3 a.m. instead of 2 a.m. An autopsy report lists Elva's cause of death as asphyxiation. So maybe... You know, like I was saying, maybe the one, that one guy that she was arguing with had something to do with it. It's hard to know, but... You know? And the thing is, it, her body was dumped sort of on the way back to... Let me, let me look. Hold on. Yeah, see, this is where she lived, right over here, right? And then her body's found right here. So this is probably the area that, the you know, if it was her friend that killed her, he's probably from that same town that she's from. And obviously going down here, you, let's say he kills her down here, you know, abducts her here, kills her, dumps her body here, and then he goes back home to wherever he lives over in this area, right? So he's just kind of on the way back to his house. If if it turns out to be um, that person. But wouldn't it suck if the person she was arguing with is the one that died in the car accident? And maybe maybe that is that person. Yeah, so they've been using DNA for exclusionary purposes up up until this point. Uh, here's her, that's her grave right there. Got the horse on it. Yeah, so I don't know when this article is put out, but it says authorities in Delaware Hope DNA samples will help identify suspects. Delaware State Police recently submitted DNA samples from Elvis Poor's body and clothes into... Okay, so I think this is probably from that same time period. But I hope they're still looking at this. They need to step forward and get this case solved, Delaware. You've got the DNA sample. You've already uploaded it, so you have it. So now you just need to upload it to... Um, you know, in the correct format for GEDmatch, and boom. Get somebody out there, a genealogist, to figure out who in the hell the guy is. So that one's pretty crazy. Now we're moving on to the next one.
And uh, hey, by the way, I'm sorry that you lost your uh, your family member was murdered there, Shell. I, I was just reading that up there. Nope, there's no closure, David. Sorry. No such no such term should be ever used again. All right, they, okay, now we're, we're on to a person named Kalisha, Kalisha Tingle, 1991. The body of a 15-year-old Frankfurt girl was found stuffed in the crawl space of a vacant house near her home. Kalisha Tingle was reported missing Tuesday. Her body was found by her uncle and Louis, and Louis Bostic, who lives next to the abandoned home about 12.30 p.m. He looked first and thought it was a mannequin. Here, let me check something out here. Yeah, this could be him. There's only one, so... Got to be him, right? And that this is his address in uh, 1992, even. And this is from 1991, so yeah, this is going to be it. Here we go. Let's see. Right here. I don't know, is that always like that? Let's see what it looks like. That's what they had as his address. Let me see if there was another one that was... No, that was the one. Sparrow Point Road in Maryland. Well, let's just see. Maybe later it'll be confirmed. He looked first and thought it was a mannequin, Bosick said. Police spokesman Rick Chamberlain said officers are investigating the girl's death as an apparent homicide. Witnesses said the girl was naked from her knees to her waist. So somebody had pulled her pants down. It's unbelievable... To a lot of people, said neighbor Eileen Jones, I hope they find whoever did it and do to them the same thing they did to her. Chamberlain said the medical examiner's office would determine the cause of death. Police have no suspect or motive, he said. Mark Tingle, Kalisha's uncle, said he was at a house down the street Tuesday afternoon when he heard what sounded like his niece's voice. I heard a scream about 12.30. I swear to God, someone, uh, someone called. Uh, he said, I heard some, someone say, help, Mark, but it was so far away. Residents said drug dealing and drug use are common in that neighborhood. The house where the body was discovered was on a list of 13 abandoned homes slated for demolition by the Susick County Council... Councilman John Lynch said. They never followed up on the legal process, he said. It's a shame. Kids go in there. Homeless people go in there. We have been trying to get the county to do something so we could stop this. Yeah. The last time Kalisha A. Tingle's family saw her, the 15-year-old Frankfurt girl was take, taking out the trash. That was early Tuesday morning. By the time her mother, Priscilla Tingle, arrived home from work that day, the girl was gone. She was staying home from school 
because let me see Priscilla Tingle. Let me t let me type that one in. Hold on. Probably isn't two of those. I love it when the people have um, like the parents have a unusual name. Then you might actually be able to find them. Yeah, there's only one in Maryland, so. Nineteen eighty-eight. Fifteen seven. Let me see what happens if I put this up. Nah. That's too far away, I think. She lived in Ocean City for a while, too. The mother. Huh. Yeah, I'll get back to it. Priscilla Tingle, a, uh, a Townsend Poultry Plant employee, said he, she called the Delaware State Police and also enlisted the aid of neighbors and relatives. Just past noon Wednesday, the girl's uncle and a neighbor found her body stuffed under a house on Reed Street. Okay, let me see. Let me open this back up again. Louis Bostic. Okay. Street around here. Ruth Snyder, as in Nick Schneider. kind of difficult here. I like it when they just give you the address in the uh, in the stories. Maybe it does later. Uh, you could hardly tell if it was a body. So they found her body stuffed under a house on Reed Street, a few doors from where she lived. You could hardly tell it was a body, said Louis Bostic, 55. Let's see. Her mother. Let me try. Let me try one more thing here. Priscilla. Ting yeah, jeez. Is there anything in here that says Reed Street? Because that's apparently they lived on Reed Street, right? No, no Reed Street on the mother's name. Maybe they didn't live there too long. Who knows? Oh, man. There goes my stomach. My stomach doesn't do too good with milk products anymore. I used to be able to do that, but a little lactose intolerant. Yeah, I don't know what you call this for me. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not a professional, uh, I don't know what you call it, like uh, investigator, like uh, with a badge or something. But, you know, this is what I do. You know, at least half my time is spent doing this. So, I don't know, I don't know if I call it a hobby, you know.
I know, I used to love all that stuff. One of the things that my stomach just can't stand anymore is uh, cauliflower. Man. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I don't I mean I, I'm just reading what Shell Renee was typing in there. I don't know. I don't consider myself like a hobby person. I put way too much time. If it was a hobby, I would just be like, yeah, you know. And I do a bunch of different podcasts, and you know, I actually try to get stuff done, like the um, Summit County. Oh, there goes my stomach again. Summit County John Doe, right? You know, we raise the funds and they actually have the money. Uh, he's in the second stage now at DNA Doe Project. No, I know you didn't mean it that way. I was just reading. I wasn't sure if you were talking about me or you guys. Yeah. Priscilla Tingle, Townsend Poultry. Let me see. The last time she was seen, now we're over here. You could hardly tell it was a body, said Louis Bostick, 55, the neighbor who made the grizzly discovery. There was blood on her head and back, and her pants were pulled down. Late Thursday, assistant medical examiner Dr. Judith Tobin reported that the cause of death was multiple blunt force trauma to the head. State police spokesman Rick Chamberlain said the finding, the finding suggests some sort of heavy object may have been used. So far, police have no weapon or suspects. Reed Street, a long, narrow road lined with mostly aging cottages. Well, hold on, let's see. This is in Reed Street in Frankfurt. Okay, well, that's Reed Street. Right there. And then when this show's over, I'm going to have to uh, figure out what the hell happened with Streamlabs. Get that sucker running. This one wasn't working either. So, hey, uh, by the way, when I ended that last live earlier, and then I opened up my, I rebooted, opened up my software again, neither of them worked again. So I was freaking out. But then I just changed the setting in one of them, and it worked. So then I tried to do the, something similar in the stream labs obs and it didn't work so then i had to go back to this is the original software that i used to use i don't even know what you're referring to christina but yeah yeah it was something to do with the update on Windows 10. Now I'm talking about my streaming software. Well, Streamlabs is... It's the same... Well, it's the same thing. It's just um, it's just a link that you donate on, on Streamlabs. If you want to. I mean, most people use Super Chats. That's the same. Uh, Reed Street, a long, narrow road lined with mostly aging cottages, is no stranger to law-breaking and violence, former Frankfurt Police Chief Glenn Griffin said. Much of the town's drug activity is con concentrated there. Last year, a 90-year-old woman was beaten to death by her drug-crazed grandson. Despite its tarnished image, the street is cherished by the ordinary law-abiding people who call it home. Some of them, including Bostic, gathered Thursday 
behind the yellow police tape and circling the latest crime scene. It's unbelievable that this is happening close to home to somebody we know, said Ronaldo Williams, 28. William Purnell, 35, said he has four daughters who used to play freely in the neighborhood back neighborhood backyards, but not anymore. They're going to have to grow up with them when they go out. I'm not sure what that means. They're going, but not anymore. They're, go they're going to have, oh, have a grown up with them when they go out. Whoever it was, she must have known him, William said. She was a quiet girl, not the kind to go with a stranger. He'd have to be a strong fellow to drag her before she was, uh, because she was a big girl, Purnell added. The house where the body was found is a crumbling wood two-story with shattered windows and a leaky wine-colored roof. A tall pine tree stands silent witness in the backyard a few feet from the ground level opening through which the body was first seen. I want to see if they had a street view on here. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, somewhere around here. It's just on this long straightaway right here. Reed Street. But remember, they were going to demolish a lot of these. So These look like they're manufactured homes, right? They were saying there was a lot of drugs going on on the street back then. Makes sense to me. I mean, why not? I wonder if this is it right here. Look at this. I don't know if that's the... They said it was a pine tree, right? What did they say? That's not a pine tree. A tall pine tree stands silent witness. I wonder if you can see the pine tree from the air. None of these look like pine trees here. Well, let's see, if you go back in time. This is 1992. Look at that, it looks totally different. This is, this is actually right around the same time. So let's just see what's changed. Watch. Look at all these trees came in. It's not way different though, I guess. Let's check this area. Okay, so right here, there's no homes right there. And then... And this is way different. Yeah, I don't even see any pine trees around. <clears throat> Let me go back to that one. Who was the other person they mentioned? The other guy. <clears throat> that might be the answer.
Okay, Mark Tingle. Let's try that one. No, just have a read street. Come on, just one. Ah, no. He doesn't have one either. Maybe he was just visiting or something. The uncle. There's only one of those too, though. Actually, there's two of them. Let me try this one. But it's the same one. I'm looking at a site that you can look up addresses. No Reed Street on there. Let me try to get this, uh, let's try one of them. No, that's not, none of those are going to be good. Okay, uh, the house where the body was found in a crumbling wood two-story with shattered windows and a leaky wine-colored roof, a tall pine tree stands silent witness in the backyard a few feet from the ground-level opening through which the body was first seen. Bosick said the house used to be a barber shop, but it's been vacant a long time. That's weird. I thought at first I was looking at a mannequin from the shop, he said. But then I saw something pink, and I knew it was the girl. To reach the body, police officers had to cut out a 12 by 15 foot section of flooring, Chamberlain said. Thursday evening, the family's small white house was crowded with grieving friends and relatives. Priscilla Tingle produced a sheaf of color photographs and carefully clipped one off. Here, here she is, my baby, she said. We only got the pictures back today. My sister was a nice person who wouldn't harm anybody, said Denise, 18. We can't understand why this happened to her. Felicia Tingle was a sophomore at Sussex Tech near Georgetown. She was studying marketing education. Thursday, friends and classmates huddled in the hallway, crying, shaking their heads, searching for reasons. She was nice, she was funny, and now she's gone. She was so friendly, I can't believe she isn't coming back, said Janita Dickerson, 15. Principal Patrick E. Savini said the school brought in the crisis counselors to help youngsters troubled by the incident. Wow, yeah, it's brutal. Just, you know. People get killed and... There was something I forgot to read that I wanted to read. Um, where, where was that? Maybe it's not this story, let me see. Oh yeah, here it is. Well, you can see that I posted on here. This is the previous story, Elva Poor. Down here it says, hope something is found. She was a kind person. I was teased a lot. She saw me in the bathroom at Bohemia Manor High. I think we're about 13. Hey, do you know who this person is? Shell Renee. Kristen Howard Burnett. 
Um, I was teased a lot. She saw me in the bathroom at Bohemia Manor High. I think we were about 13 years. She told me I was very pretty and a good person. I'm turning 44 in September. Her words in part kept me from suicide. Love you. Love you for this, Elva. I will always pray for your justice and peace for your family. And then I, then I just put Parabon Nanolabs or Identifiners is calling this case's name. I didn't do that right, I should have. Uh... Uh-oh, what's going on? It's type, it's doing oogla boogla. A lot of weird stuff going on with this, hold on. Uh-oh, how come it's still doing it? I've disconnected both of them. Uh-oh. I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> okay, now I just closed it, so maybe it won't do it now. Got stuck in a loop, it looked like. Here, I'll try it again, see if it works. Okay, uh, let's, I'm trying it again. Let's see if it works. Now type in Oogla Boogla. What happens? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, God. I guess it's not going to be working today. Ah. Okay, well, I turned it off, so I guess that doesn't work tonight. <laughs> yes, that's me. That's the bot, though. See, I typed in Oogla Boogla, set it off, and then it kept repeating itself over and over. Yes, everybody, hit that like button. Yeah, so anyways, man, this is just... Felicia Tingle. Seemed like she had things going for her. Going to school and doing well, it looked like. And they just killed somewhere on the street right here. I think this is the right spot. I mean, this is Frankfurt right here. And that's Reed Street, so I don't know... If you know, I wonder if it's near this end, because it seems like this is where you'd have a barber shop if you were going to have one. Let's take a look. I think that might be a pine tree right there. Let's see how how they've changed this area. So I think you'd have a barber shop if you were going to have one right next to town. So let's see. That's yeah, way different. Yeah, so they probably demolished all that, and I bet it was right around in this area. What did you put in on here? What are you talking about? Beetlejuice?
Oh, an email. Okay. No, YouTube doesn't pay for comments. They pay <laughs> if you watch an ad. They'll pay for that, but I don't really get ads on my videos. I only make... The only income I have is from you guys uh, sending in super chats. I get like four, uh, five bucks a day from ad revenue from old videos. It's stupid. You know? So you guys are it for me. And you guys are what determine the donation at the end of the month. But no, they don't pay for comments. Okay, I got I got, I got a couple more to do here. So the next one is Lisa McCrossan, and this one's later. But here's what's weird about this one: I was looking her name up, and I came across another article. But this isn't what they were referring to in her murder case. So listen to this one. The daughter of a paralyzed man was arrested late Wednesday after an argument with her father turned physical, police said. Lisa McCrossan, 34, of the 100 block of Highland Boulevard in Scotch Hills Apartments near Newcastle, is facing charges of intentional abuse, neglect, exploit, or mistreatment of an infirmed adult, assault, malicious interference with emergency communications, menacing of uh, offensive uh, touching and criminal mischief, said uh, was it Corporal John. Weglars Sr. Officers were called to the woman's address at 9.45 p.m. to investigate a report of a domestic incident involving a woman assaulting an elderly man in a wheelchair. Upon arrival, the 64-year-old victim told officers that his daughter was yelling and screaming at him over a cell phone call. Let's see. Screaming at him over a cell phone then threw something at the 32 inch television screen damaging it according to court records McCrossin also was accused of picking up glass and throwing it at her father's head the vase missed him shattered against the wall and left the man with cuts on his neck police said she also threw a television remote control hitting her father in the chest according to court records the victim left the apartment in his wheelchair and attempted to contact police, but his daughter took the phone from him, police said. Welglar said a neighbor ran to the man's aid, physically removing the crossing. According to court records, the victim was Christiana uh, Hospital. That's her last name. Being was at, no, at Christiana. <laughs> well, that's right. I already got that on the According to court records, the victim was at Christiana Hospital being treated for pneumonia hours before the argument. So the guy that, that her father was in the wheelchair, right? The victim told police that he had a stroke eight years ago and his daughter moved him to assist with his care. McCrossin is being held in Baylor Women's Correctional Insti Institution with an 8,500 Secured bail. Okay. So, anyways, that was just... I happened to just find her in there. I mean, that had nothing to do with anything. I mean, it was just... I mean, another incident when she was in the newspaper and kind of violent. But in this case, uh, murder USA. Lisa McCrossin found dead and dumped in a ditch in Newcastle. Newcastle, the female homicide victim whose body was found on Delaware Route 9 in Newcastle on Sunday, April 26, 2015, so this is two years after the incident with her dad, has been identified as Leeson A. McCrossin, 36, of Newcastle. 
The investigation into McCrossin's death by a Delaware State Police Homicide Unit is continuing. Further details are released as they become available. Delaware Police, our State Police Homicide Unit detectives began conducting a death investigation after a female was found deceased on Delaware Route 9 in Newcastle. Thanks, Berkeley Girl Laser Beam. The investigation began Sunday, April 26, 2015 at approximately 5.30 a.m. after a call was received by the Newcastle County Emergency Operations Center reporting the discovery of a female's body lying along the side of Delaware Route 9 River Road south of Hamburg Road. And this is apparently where, around where she was found. This is Hamburg Road, south of that. So, you know, anywhere right around in this area. Newcastle County paramedics and the Delaware State Police responded to the scene, at which time the female victim was located and pronounced dead. <laughs> We're trying to get Blue to go outside. Yeah, blue. If he doesn't want to go outside, man, he doesn't want to go outside. Newcastle County paramedics and the Delaware State Police responded to the scene, at which time the female victim was located and pronounced dead. Her body was then turned over to the Division of Forensic Sciences, where an autopsy was performed. The investigation by homicide unit detectives is still early stages. Okay, so let's see when this one is. That's her right there. And that matches the other article picture. Uh, no details of the circumstances have been released. Uh, her body was turned over. So basically that's kind of the same. Let me see if I can find any other information. There isn't anything. Let me try to do a search here between, um, we'll pick like See, that's oh, see that went all the way back to that original article. Yeah. See, it's just one of those cases they probably put on the back burner. Just yeah, shit. She beat up her dad. What do we care? You know. Okay, well, that's that case. That's all there is. She's dead, and they haven't, there's no follow up on it after that. They never even published the cause of death or anything. Uh, 
Okay, and then the last one I'm going to talk about is Miss X. I don't. I don't think so. I think you just have to be in the uh, what Sam said up above. You know, getting the likes. They, they they don't give a shit about that. What it is is just uh, if you fit into this algorithm, they they pump you up. And uh, for some reason, I'm not in their algorithm. I never have. All of my subs are just sort of organic over time. You know. Okay, so this is a, a, a Jane Doe, actually. And I, this is another one I'm interested in maybe trying to help out. State police still are receiving inquiries as they continue their effort to identify the woman whose body was found in a laundry bag March 18th. This is 1967, by the way. Captain F.E. Melvin, Public Information Office for the State Police, said that so far persons of Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, Virginia, Connecticut, and Massachusetts either have written or appeared in person to see if the dead woman is a missing relative or friend. The rate of inquiries has diminished, police said, but flyers with a picture of the woman and complete description have been sent to police departments throughout the nation. The woman said to have been the victim of an attempted criminal abortion was found partially uh, protruding from a white laundry bag on Porter Road, east of Delaware, 896. And then east of, what was it, 196? Now oh, there's Porter Road right there. No, oh, Delaware 896. Oh, there you go. And they said east of there. So somewhere on this road here. Okay, that was 1967, 1968 here. After a year, Miss X is still unidentified. Four manila folders were pulled from the Troop 2 desk drawer yesterday, labeled in red Miss X. The detective looked at them and shrugged. I could throw these all out, but I won't. Who knows when I'll need them. Miss X is the notation used by state police to identify a white girl found dead last March in a laundry bag near Glasgow. Police did, didn't know her identity then and still don't know, but it doesn't mean they've forgotten her. Except for a pair of unlabeled panties and the laundry bag, investigators have nothing more than an autopsy report that Miss X was a victim of an abortion. She was three months pregnant. We're really no closer to finding out who she was today than we were a year ago when she was found lying there on Porter Road. I don't think this case will ever be solved but it'd be cool to be able to identify her, okay? Um, he thumbs through the folder, lifts out a reward notice, just one of hundreds of scraps of paper that led nowhere. The girl was from... The girl was from Ban, and she's missing, so the detective agency send us the info. I don't know what that saying right there. It isn't our girl, he says. Another girl from Jersey named Epstein is missing, but she's 
found in British Honduras. Miss X was buried last May in Potter's Field. The county coroner buried her with a simple Christian funeral. A Methodist minister presided. Another detective says there wasn't a, a marker at her grave. The grave digger kept a beer can on the grave so he knew where it was. Jeez. That's ridiculous. Nobody knows who Miss X was, but most Delaware police carry a circular with essential information about the girl. White, 18 to 25 years old, 5 foot 5, dark brown hair, shoulder length, brown eyes, good teeth, pierced ears, and a vaccination scar on the front of her left thigh. The circular is updated every three months and sent out to all missing persons bureau. At first inquiry, tips and leads kept men working 24 hours a day. Now they average a call a week about Miss X. Thanks, Zozo. God, maybe we should just get something and have it put there. At least, uh, you know, until they identify her, right? That's ridiculous. I'm going to have to do some, look into this one a little bit. One detective has been on the case since March 18, 1967, but keep in mind this article is from 68, okay? So it's not like, oh, wow, 50 years later, he, he is optimistic that it will be eventually solved. As a reminder, the circular and two glossy head shot photographs of Miss X are framed next to his desk. He pulls out a blue folder and leafs through it, this is the case summary, strictly confidential. Most of the typewritten pages are single spaced and outline failure. 200, maybe even 300 girls have been identified. None of them are Miss X, he says. I don't know how she's not identified, to be honest with you. Another detective stops in the office and suggests that to mark the one year anniversary yesterday, they should give Miss X a new name, like Miss Y. Okay. Uh, wow, that's so clever. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> the investigation to identify Miss X and perhaps find out who performed the abortion leading to her death has taken police to Baltimore, New York, Camden, but mostly to Trenton. We trace the laundry bag to Trenton, and when we get there, we're taken into a storeroom where they have umpteen laundry bags just like the one the girl was found in. A while back, a guy called and said he knew who the girl was and promised to visit police, he, he didn't. They've even had Miss X's teeth pictured on Journal of the American Dental Association last August. No response. When you're naked, you're as good as nothing, the detective says. You know abortions are restricted to any class of people. I've interviewed over 20 girls and they're all different and sorry, so police are back where they started and no closer to a solution. Case number 13 is unsolved and, and unclosed. Maybe some morning we'll walk in and there will be someone downstairs who wants to unload. Maybe it's a dream, but how long can you keep that on your conscience? Somebody has to know who Miss X was. Hey, thanks, Allison R. Yeah, well, check this out, though. Look. I actually have a picture of her uh, when she's not alive, okay? So for you triggered people out there, I'm going to show a picture where she's not alive, and if you don't want to watch, don't watch, okay? But this, this is what she looks like, okay? Five, four, three, two, one. And there she is, okay? So you'd think, just if you spread this around right here, that you might actually, somebody would recognize her. Her face is, looks normal. Um, you know, it's weird that they even came up with sketches. Why not just take this picture and fix it a little bit? I mean, apparently that's the a side shot, I guess. I don't know. And, uh, you know, here, but look at, like, here's a sketch, a uh, drawing somebody did. Oh, how do we know that that, you know, 
I mean, that looks great and everything, but, um, you know, how do we know it looks like this? I think people would recognize this, the, a family member. But what's crazy, this is 1967, right? This is two, I mean, 50 something years ago, 52, 53 years ago. Yeah, I mean, she looks like she, you know, just died right before they brought her in here. Okay, and then this was 1991. It was also mentioned in one of those. The unidentified young woman body was found in a laundry bag near Porter Road in Glasgow. She was the victim of a botched abortion. Police believe she came to Delaware from New England to have an abortion while three months pregnant. Everyone connected with the case is dead, police say. No charges were filed. Like, every single person who was connected and whatsoever isn't alive. I'm sure they're, they're even referring to the detectives and everybody. The case will remain open. Okay, and then here's a wiki, unidentified wiki page. So there's some other attempts down here. Now this one here might not be horrible because it looks like they're trying to use the actual... You see what I'm saying? I think they even try to do the same angle. I don't know. It's just, why not put this out, you know? Because when, when you do all the doctoring up like that, if you don't get it, you got it right, nobody's going to recognize him. But it had the right nose and stuff like that. The unidentified woman was found near Porter Road, which was located in a rural area outside of Bear, Delaware. She is believed to have died somewhere else. Her legs were covered with a laundry bag that belonged to a laundry and dry cleaning company in Trenton, New Jersey. The original owner of the laundromat has since died, but relatives of its owner remembered seeing a woman similar to the unidentified woman as she was either a customer or nearby resident. So maybe she's from Trenton, New Jersey. Distant internal relatives of the unidentified woman were found in Virginia and North Carolina. However, none of the relatives that were contacted knew who she was. The unidentified woman has been buried in Potter's Field in Delaware. In the original investigation, authorities believe the unidentified woman died as a result of an illegal abortion due to soap-like substance found in her vaginal cavity, but it was later discovered that she died of untreated septicemia. So maybe something related to that, but not during the abortion? Or was that just totally unrelated at all. Let me see. Hold on. Thanks, Cairo. So it's a bloodstream infection. When you get an infection somewhere else in the body. So maybe, I don't know. So maybe, are they saying that Abortion had nothing to do with it. While foul play has been ruled out as a possibility. So now they don't think that the it was a botched abortion. But well, well here's the thing. How can you rule out foul, foul play? Why was her body in a, in a laundry sack? I mean, I don't know, man. Do, you ever, do people ever just think through something? 
While foul play has been ruled out as a possibility, the fact that she appears to have died in a different location and the fact that she has been, oh, there you go, covered in a laundry bag and was partially naked makes her death somewhat suspicious. Okay. All right, well, there you go. But I wonder if, why, if police must be thinking now it's more of a homicide. And how do they know that that's actually how she died, right? I mean, she may have had a blood condition at that time. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess she could have been with somebody and they died and she died and then they took her there. But why would they do that? I mean, it, something doesn't make any sense out of that. So if she didn't die of a botched abortion... Which it seems like they... Let me see if it says that in the wiki article here. See, here it does talk about the abortion right there. Detailed examination, however, is determined that she had an she she and her unborn child died of sepsis. Hmm. Is that something that somebody could intentionally do? Because it's a little bit suspicious that she's three months pregnant. You know, right around or about the time when she would be noticing and then tell somebody, "Hey, you know, I'm pregnant," and then she dies of sepsis. Is that something that you could artificially induce into somebody? Probably not? Okay. I mean, you'd have to know what the hell you were doing, like be a, a doctor or something to know, okay, if I give her, put this, something like, you know, an infection that she didn't, you know. How do you know, David? Okay, then, well, if you're guessing, don't type in the word no like you're an expert, okay? Type in... Hmm, I don't think so. You don't just type in, you know, Jesus, man, that, that kind of shit drives me nuts. Yes. Well, I don't really know. I was just guessing. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Yeah, that's what I think that is kind of what that normally is, right? Like you cut your hand or something and you don't um, get it treated with antibiotics for a long time. And over time, it gets really inflamed. You can hardly move it. And then your your body, the blood actually gets infected in your entire body. And then you end up dying. Yeah. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. So it's inflammation throughout the entire body. A little bit like the cytokine storm. Yeah, everybody's just guessing, but don't say no. Affirm, you know, like you're just absolutely certain if you're guessing. 
Okay? Not to, or yes, even. I mean, if you're that certain, then you must know the answer. And then say yes, and then finish the sentence with the why part, or how. Yeah, yeah, maybe, but see, it sounds like they're completely taking away the botched abortion angle. I guess the abortion, an attempt could have caused an inf infection, but it doesn't seem like that's what they're saying. I'd like to know if they had an original, the original spot of the infection, where was that, where it then spread through the body. You know, because normally it's like, a, you know, it's in the locale, right? And then it... Yeah, I don't know. That was just a, a thought, probably a stupid thought, really, but... Yeah, they definitely, this is one for the DNA Doe Project, though, here. So I'm going to try to make some phone calls. Maybe even tomorrow, see what's going on with that. See if they have a sample, and then, I mean, I think we could easily get a, uh, do another fundraiser. Yeah, well, we've got to see if we can do it. I'm so mean. Come on, you guys. Don't don't say anything positive, all right? There's the the two that I want to follow up on are this one and Elva Poor. Because they have semen in that case. That case should get solved no matter what. And then Miss X. She exists. There's DNA. And I don't think the case will ever be solved. Uh, we'll, we'll never probably know who had the the laundry bag and who put her there because it was 1967 but it'd be nice if she was identified and could be remembered by her family somewhere you know and and here's the thing is there's somebody out there that was the father of the child right wouldn't that person be interested in knowing what maybe had happened to her it doesn't seem like she was a prostitute or anything. You know, she was had, you know, was well taken care of and I mean, right now there's a freaking beer can marking the well, I don't know if it's now. That was 1968. Hopefully they've done something with that. Let me see. No. Oh, well, here we go. Find a grave. Identify an identity unknown. Found deceased along Porter Road in Bear. Let's see. Burial Potter's Field Cemetery. That's not is it. Man, how do, how do you do something about this? Uh, I'll, I'll try to make some calls tomorrow, see what's going on. I'll let you guys know whatever I come up with. Yeah, they might need to dig her up unless they kept 
something of her. But, you know, in 1967, there isn't a soul that was thinking about uh, DNA, right? There wasn't a soul out there thinking of that, right? I mean, you got to admit, like, 1967, I don't even think the word was invented at that point. Or the, the molecules were even thought of. So, they may not have. Yeah, she might have to be exhumed. It'd be great, though, if they thought of something where they preserved anything at all, just blood, a blood sample, maybe, or... Yeah, and you can get from the molar, you can usually get uh, some DNA in there. And she was also been inside of a grave, so hopefully... <clears throat> You know, like maybe a, a coffin of some sort. Really, I tried looking up all the articles. What did it say? Relatives in Virginia, North Carolina. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't think they found the right people. I think if they did it now, it would be a lot different. Yeah, I didn't see any article from 2011 or anything. Yeah, 2011, though, they don't have anywhere near the skills they've got now for finding out who it is. But that, that doesn't sound like... Uh, 2011, they didn't even really have a, any ability to do anything like the genealogy research they're doing. Oh, wait, what's the... Uh, didn't, is Rebecca, did she get her surgery or what's going on? I don't know what you guys are talking about in there. That's nah, okay, Shelly. You got accidentally um, blocked by Sean Beecham, but you're back in again. <laughs> I see what you're saying, but I think every single one of your previous comments is now gone for the entire night. So, Sean Beecham, you accidentally re removed somebody's comment and hid them, and every one of their comments for their entire night is now gone. Good job. <laughs> Jeez. You were asleep? <laughs> oh. Well, her last comment said, thanks, ag thanks again for all you do, Gray. Again, my apologies for earlier. I've watched for a while. No, I mean, you don't have to feel that way. It was just... I could see everybody was getting distracted. And I just wanted to get the stories out. Yeah, that's cool, Sean Beecham. I know you didn't do it on purpose, but every one of her comments is now gone. I don't know why they do it like that. It's dumb that they do it. Even if you get timed out, they do that. Yeah. Look at Somebody knows who she is. You know, maybe she was somebody... You know, maybe people were embarrassed by her or something. But I don't really give a shit. I just want to see if we can help try to figure out who she is. That was nine years ago. 2011 was one of the DNA breakthrough times. I'm not even sure how they were doing anything like that back then. Like... I'd like to see that article. That doesn't even make any sense.
Let's see. All right here. In 2011, investigators used DNA to link Miss X to some maternal relatives in Virginia and North Carolina. Unfortunately, they did now who didn't know who she was. There, there you go. There's a number right there. All right, well, that's about it, you guys. Thank you guys all for showing up tonight. I should have said I was looking into the Chad Daybell case. That would have... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I don't know. Uh... Well, here's the thing. It's so long ago. You're going to have to find somebody. But the thing is, is she's like, you know, 18 years old, right? Somebody, she had vaccines done, teeth work done. She was a, a child of somebody who took care of her. Okay, so there is a possibility that those people are still alive, right? I mean, because I was actually... Well, her parents would have to be quite old at this point. You know, you figure, you add... I mean, she was already, let's say, 18 in, in 67. So that would be basically 50 or 49 when she was born. And then if the parents were 29 years old, that'd be 19, 20, that'd be 100 years old, the parents, basically. Yeah, I mean, she's known. And there's a father of the child, too. It... So, anyways, pretty interesting. <laughs> Sorry about that, Shell Renee. All, uh, all of your comments are gone, but I remember you now. We all... Re we... we um, if it turns out, if they ever make an arrest in that case, they should, because they have DNA. Then you can tell us, but we'll never know for sure if you're telling the truth, if your husband really knew who the killer was. Okay, so you're going to have to send me an email with the name, and I'll just let it sit there. And, um, you know, it'd be pretty cool if you, if you got that right. I don't even know what that means, Gene. Like that whole sentence made no sense. I think the father may may have been father. I think the father may have burr father. Oh come on, Jesus! Why do you, why do you say stuff like that, Gene? Where do you come up with any of that stuff? Like what what, what information is there? Oh, boy. There was not one bit of information that we read from any of those articles that would make you think that. Okay? Zero. 
No, don't don't even listen to what that what was said there. Don't say hope not. How sad. Okay, don't forget it. Throw out what was just said above because that there is no evidence of that whatsoever, and I don't want people to start thinking that. That's crazy. Wow. They probably didn't wreck it. They probably, I bet they didn't do it right, Gene. This is 2011. This, this uh, genealogy research, the way they're doing it now, is accurate. They were probably like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, did they test the relative's DNA to see how, how many centimorgans there were? You know, I, I bet you <laughs> they probably didn't even know who the hell it was. I mean, I don't even think it was the sketches. I think it was like, hey, do you have a relative that may have looked mildly like this with back in... Uh, they may have even shown the actual picture. You know, there's no reason they wouldn't do that. Bring the photos of her face, um, actual death image. <laughs> That's okay, Sean Beecham. Sean Beecham. I know it's hard to work the uh, when you're on your cell phone. You know, you click on something and it just goes all over the place. Yeah. Be cool if they actually had uh, the the hair. Right, but what makes you go? I think this. How about you say, "Wow, what? what if maybe it's possible that the." <sighs> oh well, I guess people are just do what they do. Yeah, DNA is amazing right now. I just think they need to do it again using a company like DNA Doe Project. Give them a good sample, and they'll just go track it down until they actually find the parents. There won't be a question about it. They won't have to interview somebody. They'll literally get right down to it and get the answer. Huh? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm leaving here in a second. Been a strange night. Strange night. I thought those were interesting cases, though, didn't you guys? And those are all five of those, or six of uh, all six of those cases are ones you'll probably never hear of again on any other channel. Yet they are cases that are out there for, for some reason aren't picked up. They didn't make the algorithms of humanity. All right. Well, thank you to Paisley Dreams, Rochelle Black, and Stacy Galloway. Thank you very much. That kind of made the the whole night there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Kept us on track. Uh, Sean Beecham, Jessica Schubach, Miss Skiss, Shell Renee, uh, Zozo Berkeley Girl Laser Beam, Zozo Allison R and Cairo. Yeah, this, uh, I don't have a little window that goes around it on this one. No, that's not how, yeah, well, they haven't even checked it yet. I'm talking about using Jedmatch. And I think they're getting close to back up to what they originally maybe had. I don't know for sure, but... Yeah, it's not they don't use they're not using CODIS or anything like that.
Oh, you're okay, Gene. You're always, you always make me laugh. You give me something to, uh, like a foil. Yeah, 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 a foil. Zozo, wow! <laughs> no, Gene, you're fine. You always say funny stuff that I just go, wow. But that's okay, you know, because I don't have any hard feelings about to anybody, really. Good night, Dottio Caspian Horses Rock. Hey, Gene, one of these days you're going to be right on one of those crazy things, and you'll be able to say, Boom! <laughs> Stick it gray! All right, come on. Thanks, Lucilla Blue. Hey, all right, that's my dog's name. Blue. What is CHF, by the way? Never heard of it. Kentucky Fried Chicken? Yes, everybody, thank you all for showing up. Yes, I guarantee it. One of these days, Gene, you're going to you're gonna have the, uh, say one of those crazy things about, oh, it was incest. He had this and that. And then one day it'll come true. And Okay, whenever one of those really crazy ones comes true, Gene, that's why I'll be sending you a, uh, a hoodie, not a mug, not any kind of, all right? So there you go. No, see, that was never any, that was, no, that was, you didn't get that one right. You're trying to do the Tina Losser case. Yeah, that, you didn't get that one. 
Yeah, it was totally different. They just said that one, at one point they poked her in the back with a knife. And then all of a sudden, oh, they walked her to the death holding the heavy... Nice try, though. Nice try. Yeah, well, that's on the other software that wasn't working today. That must have been weird, seeing me do the robot with no music playing at all. We gotta. We should go over the Tina Losser case again one of these days. That one's nuts. I mean, there isn't anything new, but just to go over it again. All right, everybody. Thank you all for showing up tonight. And uh, make sure you're still washing your hands. You're maintaining your social distancing, wearing your mask. The masks are really, really important, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's really, really important to wear the masks when you're out at the stores and everything. Don't be one of the idiots to go, oh, that's just so... Really. That's why when you see those in Japan and China and elsewhere, all those years, you always see them wearing that because they know what the hell they're doing. So that's it. All right, everybody. Thank you all for showing up tonight. And as I always say, everybody, until next time, be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector. Click rejecter. I'm a certified human lie detector. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna stretch you. If you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector. Freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a pup protector. Fool deflector, interceptor, and I'm meaner than a specter with a vector on his pector with all respect, y'all. Just remember, I've a temper for conjecture. I have no agenda, I'm no pretender, and I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Talk to you. Yeah, that was awesome. Wow, John Boy, that was a little bit, a little too much right there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, it, it was a little high on fun, too. Well, to be honest, I've had a couple drinks. <laughs> no wonder you sound so happy. Yay! All right, well, that was an interesting show there tonight, talking about cases that absolutely nobody else would ever talk about. Wow, you have so much to say tonight, but go ahead, keep on going. Okay, blah, blah. Hey, I'm just kidding. Do not do that. All right. Hey, good night, Mary Lou. Good night, John boy. Hey, have drinks more often. Well, that wasn't nice to say. I know, but, you know, it was more fun. Good night, John boy. Good night, Mary Lou. Yay. Wow, those two, they get nutty sometimes, huh? They are crazy. All right, so you guys uh, have a good night and be safe out there.